inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. This week we're taking a look at our next uh, monster minion from Dreadmoon. It is the Assassin, another turncoat elf or enemy elf. There's a lot of villain elves in the last two expansions in Dreadmoon and Mage of the Mirror. So we've got some more coming up. Kind of looking like a ninja, got that chain whip weapon. I don't remember what it's called at the moment, but uh, they're pretty cool. Really lithe, athletic pose. Pretty cool sculpt and design, so let's get into it. We're going to start off with the cape, just like we did with those other elves. Our palette's going to be relatively the same since, uh, well, going by the artwork, but also I think even without the artwork, I probably would have made these uh, similar. I feel like they fall in line quite well um, conceptually, even without that artwork. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start with our cape. It's got a big shape that overlays and wraps around the body, so it's very easy to make mistakes, which is why we're going to start with it, because then we can clean up with it. You know, if there's no other colors on here, the only cleanup we have to do is rebasing with some white or our off-white or whatever have you. So that's a good tip if you have anything that wraps around or any crevices, do those large, bright, colorful, wrap around the areas first. Um, and then go from there. We're using our Luxion purple for the underclothes. She's got some pants and she's got a shirt. Uh, I don't cut into the breastplate here, but later I do. You can see the sculpt kind of cuts in at the armpits and uh, I'll, I'll put some Luxion purple more up into those armpits that I didn't do initially. One thing I will note that will probably make your painting easier and that I will do on the second assassin uh, is when you do the red on the cape, later on we're gonna dry brush some white. It's very <laughs> much easier to dry brush white when everything is white. You can get right up in there, especially on the front for that front collar. You'll see how I remedy this myself, but uh, yeah, to make your life easier, definitely do the dry brushing early, early, early. We're gonna use uh, brown for those boots, and you'll notice that I did make a mistake on these boots in that I wanted a metal plate on the front of the boots. There's some, some armor there, and I accidentally painted over <laughs> the armor. Um, so when you're doing it, if you wanna have metal plates on the, the leg armor, you can separate it, but hey, you don't have to either. It's, it's just really for eye blocking and getting in a lot of those uh, pockets. But when it comes to metallics, it's gonna be almost completely covered, right? Half the time. Um, and if you, if you don't paint over it, we're gonna put that gloss on anyway. So go from there, do your own thing. Uh, you can make the same mistakes as me and still recover. I'll show you how, uh, but yeah. Get all the leathers going. They she got a really weird belt location up in there. Uh, do your best eyeballing and then here we have our basilicanum we're coming in you can see I'm, I'm doing the other leg armor properly uh, I didn't paint over it and then here we just ignore the brown that I did on the other boot because it's already painted who cares got a lot of steel got a lot of metal on this one um, not crazy amount but just a lot more than we've seen recently so just go around take your time just got a lot of braces a lot of armor Breastplate, pauldrons, uh, the dagger. We're gonna leave the central part of that back, uh, like weighted anchor part. Uh, we're gonna paint that gold. And then yeah, she's got some little knives on her belt. Don't forget those. We're gonna do the whole breastplate in this and we're gonna layer up our gold on top uh, a little bit differently. So you can see how that's gonna work too. You don't always have to do this blocking exact. You can recover, you can modify, you could paint over. Um, don't be afraid to, to you know, make mistakes or don't be afraid to just go loosey-goosey like you've seen with uh, some of the other ones where we've not really cared too much. We've just painted directly on top with colors that we don't usually base with. Here, we're gonna do our gold blocking. 
as well as our skin. Not a lot of skin on this one. She does have two gloves. Uh, she doesn't have the doodler's gloves or anything. But, uh, yep, just get her face and her ears. A little bit of gold here and there. Skeleton hoard for her blonde hair. These could definitely be moments where you're doing a different skin color, different skin tone, so block and base accordingly. And lastly, a little touch of apothecary white over the parts that are going to be white, just to add some color to those shadowed areas and, and whatnot. Just a little tinting. And be careful around that belly area because we have painted everything else. All right, Violet 3 with the pants. We are gonna do a couple things out of order. I, I painted this one a little loosey-goosey. <laughs> kinda got into my own head a little bit and uh, did things out of probably a proper order. So we, we will return to the pants later, but we have Violet 3 here to just clean up some of the blotchiness as well as to add a highlight over some of our Zenithal dark areas. Gunmetal to put over all of our metals, all of our steels. Basically, everything you did, Basilicanum Gray. Take your time, just go around and hit them all out. And you can see here, I'm doing that plate on the front of the boot. And no one will be able to tell. <laughs> no one will know that I painted it brown instead of gray underneath. It's totally fine. Just like before, we're doing the whole breastplate as this silver color, and we'll do the gold on top. Null oil gloss if you got it. Otherwise, just use a dark wash, uh, a black wash, whatever you got that's going to give you that greasy, steely look. And then put a gloss varnish on top. Or even if you have the tools for it, you can mix them together if you know the, the right combination or volumes, what have you. Retributor Armor, my favorite gold, putting that into all of the gold spots. So that's this little weight thing down at the end. I thought the little fire decal looked kind of cool to be gold. Almost like a, like a lantern or like a fake lantern, even though it's a weight. And we got some designs here on this, uh, this sheath for the knife, the dagger. And then, uh, of course, the breastplate. We can just paint right on top of the silver that we did. Uh, and then by the art... We've got some fine lining to do, so take your time, use your smallest brush, use what you got. Don't drink coffee before you do it, don't get jittery. <laughs> uh, and then do all the little outlining there. And the same thing, we can use Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss or a Flesh Shade with a gloss varnish, whatever you got. Uh, and we're just going to put that right on top. So that even includes where we've painted on top of the silver. We just put that right on top. Just stack them together. It's going to work fine. Violet 2 for another uh, highlight to our purples. Our purple pants. And uh, if you need to, the purple shirt underneath. My Zenithal was pretty bright. So I didn't actually think I needed to do much of the highlighting whatnot when it came to the arms. But cleaning up some streaking and stuff on the pants instead. Here you can see the dry brush of white on the cloak and uh, because I didn't want to dry brush right onto her face with everything painted, uh, a good note why you need to do this earlier, uh, I just took a thin brush and painted in some uh, details there for that one. Cadian flesh tone to help clean up any splotchiness and round out the face, do an initial first step highlight, that kind of thing. Business as usual with pale skin tones. Remember, you could do this with any skin tone. We could have her darker skin, we could make her tan, we could make her green, anything like that. Kids love flesh working in there, and there you go. She's got some pretty defined face details, so take your time, get them in there, have fun. Continuing with our face, our skin, we're gonna use Pallid Witch Flesh just to get those really sparkly kind of anime shines that I like to do. Uh, it really, again, bears repeating, I think I'm always gonna say it, it really helps define 
uh, the features of the skin, like those very top points. It's gonna make the skin really pop. That's one of my focuses that I always try to do on miniatures is the skin, really make the skin pop, pop, pop. If you have it, I wanna see it. <laughs> Anywhere there's skin, I want it to stand out. Carabur Crimson, we were doing a little bit of makeup. You don't have to do the makeup, I like to do it. And then we continue on with uh, the rest of our highlights. We've got um, Chrome. Don't forget those little daggers back there. I know I haven't been showing them very much, but they're hidden there, they're there. Chrome going on for all of our metallic highlights. That's gonna be our silvers and our golds. Get those little pings, those pops in there, make her shine. Even around the filigree, that ornate edging, just get a little dot, couple dots in there. As well as that chain, you could just pop in a couple of the, the links, just put in dots, boop, 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 boop. Don't worry too much on that. And then our cool anime hair. I say anime, but it's also kind of realistic too when light hits you from you know certain angles at the top, right? If you're out in sunlight, you'll see that luminescent halo directly on the top of the hair, as well as you know the, the Pantene commercials or, or <laughs> hair dye products, etc. You'll see the, the light shining off the ripples, etc. So it, it is a realistic effect, but I think it's easier for me to interpret it for you guys in that way using anime. <laughs> so we're just doing these last final little white hot spots in there. And don't forget that little bit in the front, she's got some hair that streaks over her face. We can also use this white to do uh, her tunic underneath, right? That white tunic we're gonna bring up in a couple layers of bold titanium, about two, three, you know, you can do your initial one and then just go further and further away from the edges, right? Just making it a more thinner, thinner, thinner localized uh, highlight. It'll bring it up and you'll have a little bit of variation, even though that bold titanium white is very bright initially. You can see here I'm doing my second coat. So that's two coats now, right? And I'm doing a little further away from where I've already done. And then we're gonna base coat like we normally do with a gray paint, a texture paint, a dry brush, uh, a shade and a dry brush. That's it. And there you have it. The assassin is finished, looking pretty pretty cool. I, I don't mind this one, you know? Even if it is kind of built off of those initial elf figures from Mage of the Mirror, uh, I, I think it's got some cool world building to it by having them have share those similarities, right? We do get a little bit of lore in, in terms of like the, the society. Um, <laughs> I think that's, that's kind of cool. Some consistency there, uh, it, it shows they're putting some effort in. Uh, but yeah, overall, I, I just really like this mini. I think uh, it could have easily been like just Black Ninja kind of thing. And, and they went with, you know, consistency to the world and, and design that they're creating. So I, I think that's pretty cool. And for those of you who want to do something different, I think that this sculpt and this figure is totally capable of being the dark black ninja assassin that we're all kind of familiar with. But with that, we are finished the assassin and we're moving on to the next one. If you liked the video, liked what you saw, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a little thumb up if you want. Also, my Patreon is launched and here are my first supporters in the credits. Thank you guys so much for joining, for supporting me. Thank you for being all around just receptive and kind. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. If you want to see game stuff, check out my Twitch. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.